Today, we're gonna to be talking about how coffee affects the heart. Now, there'll be some good, some positives, a little bit of negatives, and we're gonna teach you what to look for and if you're someone that might be susceptible to the negatives from coffee and caffeine-based consumption. Hey everybody, welcome back. Great to have you here. This is episode 2741 of the Cabral Concept. Before we get started, I just wanna make sure that you note that this is not just caffeine because they actually looked at in the second study green tea drinkers, which has some caffeine in that, uh, versus a black tea or coffee. And the results were actually markedly different. So let's get started. This one was fairly recent. It was a smaller study. The second one I'm going to bring you it was somewhere around 20,000 people. I think it was just over 18,000. I'll bring you that study uh, in particular because that's quite noteworthy. Uh, this one was just over 100 people, but the reason why this study was actually very well done is that they tracked the participants, the subjects, all day long. They actually, it was a pretty wild study. They looked at them and cross-referenced their locations on their phone, so they knew where they were at all times during the day. They knew when they entered a coffee shop. Uh, they also tracked it with their Fitbit or any plug-in towards like an Apple Health-based device. Uh, so they knew when they were getting their steps or they were consuming maybe some type of beverage. And they used continuous glucose monitors as well. So this is, again, a, a very fascinating study because now that we're starting to get much more into health tech, whether it be the CGMs, the continuous glucose monitors, um, the health tech monitoring devices, it might be a Hanu for your HRV, it might be an Aura Ring, it might be a Fitbit, it might be an Apple Watch, a Garmin, etc. cetera, um, you're able to just get a lot more data. And then of course, if you're walking around and you have this phone in your pocket or pocketbook or something, then this is going to be able to track you if, of course, you're allowing yourself to be tracked. And even if you're not, you're probably being tracked anyway, but that's for another podcast. So when we look at this, the, the question was, does caffeine, specifically from coffee, lead to abnormal heartbeats? Because it has been theorized, or at least postulated, that caffeine causes heart-based issues. And we're going to look at a few different surroundings of that. But to cut right to the chase, coffee consumption, based on this study, there's a big caveat, so hold for the caveat, but coffee consumption does not increase abnormal heartbeats associated with an increased risk of the most common heart rhythm disturbance, according to this new study published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And I will link it up for you today if you want to read this one. And it's at stephencabral.com slash 2741. You can definitely check that out as we're talking about uh, this here today. Uh, the I saw it in the Wall Street Journal. That's the first place that I actually saw this. Uh, and the common heartbeat uh, irregularity that they were looking for was called an atrial fibrillation. So an atrial fibrillation, which could be increased if someone consumed caffeine. In this study, they were typically looking at two cups or more for caffeine drinkers, and then they were examining that versus non-caffeine drinkers. So what they found was this, and this was published uh, a second, another study in the Journal of American of Heart, uh, Journal of the American Heart Association. This was last year. And I'm gonna get to the hypertension in just a moment, but what they found was that although caffeine in this well-tracked group did not cause the atrial fibrillation, it did actually have one pro and one con. The caffeine enabled about 10 to 15% more steps per day. Now, again, was it a correlation? Or was there any causation related to the caffeine? Maybe. Maybe they had more energy, right? Reported energy. And so they got more steps. Now, the more steps you take, especially over 7,000 steps per day, it absolutely has a direct correlation with decreased mortality and decreased all-cause mortality. So that's pretty fantastic. That's dying from any disease goes down if you walk 7,000 or more steps per day, ideally right around 10,000. Now, so that was coffee drinkers got about 10,000, sorry, got about 10 to 15 percent more steps per day. However, they averaged, on average, 35 less minutes of sleep per day. And that 35 minutes less sleep is actually a mortality risk factor. And it can increase an irregularity in the heart 
called the a higher number of premature ventricular heartbeats. And there were 154 uh, irregular ventricular heartbeats versus 102 for the non-caffeine group. So the caffeinated group had about 50% more of these premature ventri ventricular heartbeats. Now, again, everybody has them, typically minor, but it could contribute to weakening of the heart as someone gets older. So it's unclear as this is offset, you know, by um, better activity, more walking during the day. Does it end up being a wash if you get more steps? Does the 35 minutes less sleep matter? Now, we don't know. But what I want to share with you is this. I think and I should say, you're going, and I know you're going to be someone that's going to be able to see if it's affecting you, right? And I think that there's also a correlation as to when you may be having your caffeine during the day. So I would love to see a follow up study on this. I think that there will absolutely be one done. But if you're looking at your Aura Ring or you're looking at your Whoop device or your uh, Apple isn't quite there yet, Garmin, the watches aren't quite there yet. The BioStrap is there in terms of tracking your sleep. Um, it doesn't separate out deep and REM as the last time that I used it, but there's a lot of devices that can. And so what I recommend is, again, you're getting your seven to nine hours of sleep per night more towards eight to nine if you're someone recovering from any type of dis-ease of the body. And the other thing that you're looking for is 90 minutes of deep sleep and two hours of REM. So out of all of your sleep each night, you need 90 minutes from REM, REM two hours from deep. REM is going to come typically uh, later in the night uh, or early in the morning, however you want to look at it. And your deep's going to come a little bit earlier. That's typically what we see in our practice. We track thousands and thousands of people uh, inside of our practice and they, you know, that's what they report. Not only do they feel better when they get an amount of the sleep, that's actually what's recommended as well. So 90 minutes deep sleep, two plus hours REM, you'll be able to see if caffeine is affecting you. What the study didn't look at necessarily was time of the day of coffee consumption. So if you're drinking one or two cups of, in the morning, and it's not leading to anxiety, jitters, uh, nervousness, higher blood pressure, which I want to get to in just two minutes from now. Um, what I want you to think about is, okay, you might be good, but if you have an afternoon cup of coffee, how does that affect your sleep? You probably may only know if you're, unless you're, if you're using a biotech-based device, like something that tracks your sleep. And again, I know that there's a lot of sleep uh, mattresses and liners and all those things, so you can use whatever you'd like, but you really have to look at one thing consistently over time. So my recommendation is that it may not be the caffeine per se, it may be the time of the day. And, and I would just say just for most people, I don't think that you're going to get a ton of benefit over 200 milligrams of caffeine per day. I would actually see that, say that there's going to start to be detriment to that. And that's about one and a half, two cups of coffee maximum. Now, I know a lot of people drink a lot more coffee than that. And I know that you can cite studies on Alzheimer's and type 2 diabetes and others showing the improvement. But, you know, I just wonder, are, is that because of the antioxidants in coffee? Like, do you need the caffeine? And I'm not sure that you do. I, I don't know that, uh, you know, those people following a more of a Mediterranean diet, high antioxidants and all these great things that they need to be drinking that much coffee. And I, I would say that the, um, the answer to that is no. And that's because when I look at this next study, which I'm bringing you right now, on high blood pressure and the heart, uh, what did I, I'm going to give you just the highlights. This is what the highlights found. This is a 19-year follow-up. This is quite the study. And this was done, uh, again, with about 18,000, well, I can give you the exact number, 18,570 adults between the ages of 40 and 79. 6,570 were men, 12,000 were women. Uh, this was done in Japan, and it looked at 19 years of follow-up. Uh, 842 cardiovascular-related deaths out of those 18,000-plus participants. Here's what they found. Drinking two or more cups of coffee a day was associated with twice the risk of cardiovascular death in people whose blood pressure was 160 over 100 compared with those who did not drink any coffee. Now, remember, this is in a hypertension, high blood pressure group. If you don't have high blood pressure, okay, that's not you. But drinking caffeinated coffee with high blood pressure, really bad idea. 
Okay, next, drinking one cup a day of coffee was not, not associated with increased risk of death from cardiovascular disease across any blood pressure cat categories. Okay, so one cup of coffee a day, and a, a cup of coffee, by the way, is eight ounces. So if you're looking at a 12 ounce when you're out or 16 ounce, 16 ounce would be two cups of coffee. So just kind of letting you know where things fall because a lot of times just because we can fill a mug, we think it's one cup of coffee, you know, it's not one cup of coffee, right? It's not how much can you fill uh, in a very large container. So in the last part, which was, I would say the most interesting was green tea consumption of all kinds was not associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease mortality across any blood pressure categories. So it's really important because green tea contains about 40 to maybe 50 uh, milligrams of caffeine. You know, maybe that's one third of like a Dunkin' Donuts coffee. And if you're looking at a small, that's a small. And if you're looking at a Starbucks coffee, which is 270 milligrams, that's a lot of caffeine, right? In just a tall size, which is they're small, um, that would only be like 20%, 25%. So, you know, when you look at it, it's the caffeine that seems to be making the difference. And that's because caffeine can accelerate and speed up heart rate, increase anxiety, tension in the body, uh, nervous system tension as well, and raise blood pressure. So this was, again, a really great study. This was done in the Journal of the American Heart Association. And one thing I would say is if you need a little bit of caffeine and you're worried about the coffee, think about switching to green tea or matcha green tea. Very high in the EGCG, and which is a high antioxidant polyphenol. That's why I wanted to bring this to you because there's also a very significant decrease in potential cancer risk and maybe all cause mortality by consuming two to three cups of green tea per day. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to drink green tea in order to be a healthy human, but I do want to let you know that uh, there is significant health benefits to that green tea maybe with very little downside as we're seeing in many of these studies. So hopefully this was helpful. What I would say is um, if you're borderline blood pressure, meaning like 130, we'll say over 80, uh, be careful with your caffeine consumption. Again, I can't give you medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures or diagnosis on this podcast. What I would share with you is probably keep it a one cup per day if you're a coffee person, if you love your coffee, but also think about this. I have a whole podcast on how to uh, switch over to decaf or do less caffeine. I'll link that up today as well. That's at stephencabral.com slash 2741. We give that to all of our new clients because it's not that there aren't a lot of benefits to coffee. There are. The benefits come in a lot of those polyphenols, the antioxidants. You want to get organic coffee. You want it to be tested for mold uh, and contaminants. And again, you want it to be a high polyphenol based type, which is not a cheap coffee. You need to get a good, strong, um, not dark roast, but a good, strong quality coffee. And so I'll link that up today. Um, all my coffee recommendations, the companies that I use are always at stephencabral.com slash resources. I'll try to link one up today as well. And I'll link up the studies. So I'll let you come to your own conclusions. My recommendation is that if you're relying on caffeine for your energy, something very well could be wrong with your HPA axis, which helps control your adrenals, the HPT axis, which controls the thyroid. So we need to look at your overall metabolism with a stress mood and metabolism test. Uh, enjoy your one cup or so or coffee per day. Don't ever do it. Try to move in some green tea if you still want that key of caffeine from maybe even a healthier source. And then decaffeinated coffee, uh, as long as it's Swiss water processed, organic, tested for contaminants, can give you a lot of those polyphenol and antioxidant based benefits. So again, thank you so much for tuning into the show. All of the notes, all of the study links will be at stephencabral.com slash 2741. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.